Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. I'm Captain Naom. Welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. To my left. Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. Officer Elijah. All praise. And today's topic we're going to be touching on God's holidays. All right, God's holidays. Because we know today that our people are not keeping God's holidays. All right, we're keeping the world's holidays. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, so on and so forth, right? But we're going to prove today that everybody said they love and follow Christ. What did Christ keep? All right. He kept the laws that were given to us by our forefathers. All right. So let's go to Matthew 15 and verse 7. We're going to start off and show you that you have been learning man's traditions. Not God's. Not things that have been passed down from your forefathers. Your customs. But man's customs. Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see what they're saying? Christ is telling you, he, he quoting the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 29 and 13, that's what he quote. All right? Christ ain't coming and say anything different than what our forefathers said. All right? That's the Bible that they had. Remember, when Christ was walking on earth, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, all that wasn't written, written. All right. So he said, you honor me with your mouth, but your hearts are far from me. Our people's hearts, their mind is far from God, far from the traditions of our forefathers to today. And we and all these other uh, pagan things. All right. Keep reading. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. But in vain do they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what you're doing today. In vain, they're worshiping God. Because today, they talk about what? Putting Christ back in Christmas. All right? You got a dude in Houston. Been doing it for like 40 years. I forget the name, but he been doing it for 40 years. Riding on a low rider. Passing out Christmas gifts. Okay? Where did Christ say in the Bible that was a custom and laws of somebody riding around in a, in a low rider and, and pass out gifts? It's not in there, all right? It's not our customs. So in vain do they worship Christ. It says, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. You learn all the customs and philosophies of men, all right? Now I'm going to show you what, what's our heritage and what God gave us as a nation, all right? So go to Deuteronomy 33 and 4, all right? We, we've always had a custom and laws, all right? Always. But just remember what uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4 said, we discontinue from those things, all right? Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So we have an inheritance. We have laws that were given to us by our forefathers. And we're going to show you that Moses established these things. Some of it was before Moses as well. But we're going to show you the customs. So, quick note, customs, which is a, a, uh, a practice so long established that it has the force of law. That's the definition. So, meaning it's instituted into law. All right? So, now let's see what's instituted in our laws that God gave us. Let's go to Leviticus 23. All right? We go get today. You go understand what's been established in the nation of Israel. All right? And the synonym for customs are practices, habits, fashions, observances, and rules. All that is going into laws that you were given. Your customs. Go ahead. Verse, verse 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. This is so Moses, you know, he got the commandments from God, right? Everybody, oh, ten commandments? Yeah. No, it's more than ten, all right? But in those ten, we have other laws, which we're reading now, which are customs that were passed down from generation to generation. And we're going to see and show you today that Christ kept these customs that we're going to show you, all right? So it says, these are our feasts. With an S, meaning it's more than one feast in this chapter. All right, we're going to touch on some of them. Some of them all right? So uh, from there, let's go to uh, the first one. 
Let's go to Luke 4, 16. Luke 4, 16. Because in this chapter you read Passover, Sabbath, Tabernacle, Fresh Fruit, which is Pentecost. You know, you read a lot of different, uh, you read on a lot of different uh, holidays. These are true holidays because the root word of holiday is holy day. Okay, what's holy about Christmas? When you go into the origins of Christmas, they were giving us as gifts. Okay, all these different pagan days have origins behind them and they line up to evil. All right, so uh, read that. I'm sorry, let me get it. Go ahead. This is the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. It says, so his custom was what? He went to the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. This was established all the way before Moses back in uh, Genesis chapter 2. The Sabbath. All right. And it was prescribed for a certain people. We go read who those certain people are. So Christ came and the custom was of the Jews is to go into the Sabbath, the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. All right. And it says stood for to read. Read what? The Bible. All right. You read further. It's going into, you read the prophet Isaiah again. You see? So every time that Christ is teaching in a lot of instances, he's re, uh, going back to what our forefathers said. All right. So from there, let's go to uh, Exodus 31 and 16. Let's see who the laws of the Sabbath was established with and who, who they were for. All right. Exodus 31 and 16. This is the book of Exodus chapter 31 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is, we go keep reading. It says, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes, that's who we teach to. That's who this Bible is for. It says, they shall observe the Sabbath. It said, to keep it throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant. Perpetual means forever. Meaning, as long as you continue to generate on this earth, your children, 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 children will keep this Sabbath. All right, and all these feast days that we're touching on today. <clears throat> all right, keep reading. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. You see that? It says it's a sign, that covenant that it spoke about in the verse before, between me, God, the Most High, and the children of Israel, the 12 tribes, no other nation. But that nation, all right? And it re referenced and went back to what? The Most High. Because you read, you look in the Bible right there, it got Genesis 2 and 2 right there up under the verse for mine. So understand that these things were established. Christ wasn't doing anything different than what he was taught of who? His, his mother and father and his foreparents, all right? So from that, we understand and establish now the Sabbath was one of the high holy days that we keep, right? The first one. So now, let's go back to Leviticus 23 right quick. Just to establish another one. Like I said, it's, it's many of them, but we're touching on a couple today. All right, we're going to start at verse, uh, read three, and just read on through to four. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse three. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, mm -hmm. unholy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So that's showing you how you keep the Sabbath. Remember, there's always sub-statutes under the, 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 the main statute or the main law, all right, concerning the Sabbath. You have other sub-statutes and laws pertaining to the Sabbath on how to keep. And as well as all these uh, high holy days, okay? Uh, keep reading. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, mm -hmm. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. Right. So this is showing you and telling you, you come together. Just like you go to the wicked Christian church today, you come together in righteousness, keeping Lord, the Lord's high holy days, the holidays that God gave us. All right. This is the commandment for us to do. Keep going. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread so unto it, the Lord. It's giving you times and dates of when the next feast will come. 
All right, go ahead. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Right, so it's telling you on these Sabbath days, there's no work, period. All right, so when we keep the how holy days, the holidays that God gave us, we don't work. All right, so from there, let's go to, uh, what I want? Uh, let's go to Luke 2. Luke 2 and 43. Let's go see what Christ kept. All right, remember, I'm, I'm pointing out a lot of things dealing with Christ because everybody want to, Talk about Christ. That's why I said they, they say they honor me with his mouth, but their heart is far from him. All right. In vain do they worship me. All right. So, yeah, let's get that. Luke 2 and 42. This is the book of Luke, Start chapter 2 and verse 41. Mm -hmm. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So Christ's parents, mother and father, that's another doctrine, but mother and father, all right, went to the Passover, which we just read in Leviticus 23. So this was before Christ. His parents, that mean they've been keeping that law since they were grew up. Right. You understand? Now they training a child in the same manners and customs and laws that they've been in. That's concerning their people. All right? Keep going. And when he was 12 years old, mm -hmm. they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. When he was 12, they went up to Jerusalem to what? Partake in the custom of the feast. Which you can read that in, Deut in, in Deuteronomy 16, 16. All right. Those three times a year, we will go meet up in Jerusalem. All right. To keep the Most High's commandments. All right. So let's go to Exodus 12 and 14. Let's see when this law was established. Everything has an origin. All right. And the origins you've been keeping in this society today is not of God. All right. Read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 14. Uh -huh. And this day, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, mm -hmm. and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Mm -hmm. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So it's showing you how we keep the Passover. As I said, all these, all our customs and holidays, our holy days, they have other laws pertaining with them, all right, that's attached to them, all right? So we eat unleavened bread on that day, on that, within those days, all right? Keep going. Verse 16. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation you to you. So the first day and the last day is going to be a holy convocation. We're coming together as a body. All right. To, and, and this whole chapter, we're rejoicing and keeping in mind of memory and thanking the Most High for delivering us from where? Egypt. All right. We're not just celebrating stuff just to celebrate stuff. Uh, you know, a man with a big beard, white beard, and red boots, and so on and so forth coming down the chimney. We're not celebrating that, all right? We have actual meaning behind what we celebrate, all right? Keep going. No manner of work shall be done in them, mm -hmm. save that which every man must eat. Mm -hmm. That only may be done of you. Right, so jump to verse uh, 24. Verse 24, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee, and to thy sons forever. You see, so Christ didn't come and, and change anything. He came to continue establishing what he learned from his forefathers, his mother and father, from their mother and father, so on and so forth. Right? So, and that, you can touch on New Year's with that as well, because we start at the beginning of this chapter, 12 and 1, as what's for to come up next week, New Year's. That's not in the dead of winter. All right? And we're going to show you through the scriptures what was going on in winter. Another High holy day, all right? So from there, let's go to uh, John 7 and 12. Now we're going to touch on another high holy day, which is called Tabernacle, which you can find in the same book we've been reading out of, Leviticus 23, all right? John 7 and 12. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry. Because the Jews sought to kill him. So Christ didn't want to go to Jerusalem because his people, they hated him. All right? And they were trying to kill him. All right? Keep reading. 
Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. So the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. This is another feast that we keep in the midst of Israel. Another holiday that God gave us. All right. Jump to verse 10. Verse 10. Oh, but nine. when, verse 9, mm -hmm. when he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Mm -hmm. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Right, so he still went up, even though they were trying to kill him to keep the feast, but he did it in secret. Because as we, you read through the Bible, we know that he was hated of his own people, and they are the ones that persecuted him, all right? So from there, let's go to Deuteronomy 16 and 13. Again, let's establish, go back before Christ and see when this law was established. Christ continued to keep what his fathers kept, his customs, his heritage, all right? Deuteronomy 16 and verse 13. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles mm -hmm. seven days. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, mm -hmm. and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant mm -hmm. and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Jump to 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. So these are commandments that God gave us that we must come and meet and keep the feast that he gave us. Go ahead. In the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Passover. And, and in the feast of weeks. Uh, Pentecost, fresh fruits. And in the feast of tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Right. So in the feast of boots as well, which is tabernacle, the Most High told us to come together. All right. So Christ wasn't doing nothing different than what our forefathers did. All right, his customs. N nowhere in there, go to Jeremiah 10, it talks about Christmas. He didn't keep Christmas. That was before him as well, but that were not customs. All right, so let's go to uh, John 10 and 22. John 10 and 22. Let's get one more feast that Christ kept, showing you that we had customs and laws set up before the captivity. He, Christ was in captivity, the Roman captivity. But was he keeping their feasts and customs? No. He was keeping the feast that our forefathers kept. Go ahead. This is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And it was winter. So Christ wasn't keeping Christmas or celebrating New Year's in the dead of winter. He was keeping the feast of dedication. And we'll get the origins of the, uh, the feast of dedication from our forefathers. Keep reading. Verse 23, mm -hmm. and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Right. All these things were established before Christ, but he kept it because this is a feast that the Most High told us to keep for what? Being able to get the temple rededicated to him. Let's see that. Let's go to uh, 1 Maccabees 4 and 55 through 59. Judas Maccabees, and this wasn't the only first time that this happened, but the Most High established it through him to make it uh, uh, a holiday, all right? Okay. 54 through 59. Yes, sir. 55 through 59. 55. Mm -hmm. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 4, and verse 55. Mm -hmm. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising God, the God of heaven, who had given them good success. He gave them good success because he allowed them to be able to overthrow the, the, uh, the Gentiles of Idumean, so-called white man, to restore the temple, to put it back in their hand so they can take all the defiled things out and, and honor it back and dedicate it back to the Most High. Keep going. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days mm -hmm. and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Deliverance and praise. Deliverance of the heathen praise to the Most High for letting them overcome them and have great success. And as you see as well, Talk about sacrifice stuff. We don't do that anymore. All right. Christ was that ultimate sacrifice. All right. Keep going. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of mm -hmm. gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Mm -hmm. Thus 
was there very great gladness upon, among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. You see, the, the reproach of the heathen was put away. They ain't uh, happy and glad over stockings and, and candy, corns, and all this other stuff that our people get excited about today. All right, They were rejoicing over the victory that the Most High allowed them to get. All right, go ahead. Verse 59. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days mm -hmm. from the five and twentieth day of the month Caslu mm -hmm. with mirth and gladness. You see that? So it gave a date and time again on when we keep this. And it talked about the season, which we read in Leviticus 23. All right. So I pray that y'all get something from this. And you understand that we are not keeping God, I mean, uh, men's holidays, so-called holidays, but we need to reestablish God holidays and how holy days within ourselves, all right? And I understand that you're Israelite according to the Bible, all right? So with that, we say shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Shalom, Israel. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC, has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.